हेलो एवरीवन ओ ओके वी आर सपोज टू डू ए डिफरेंट इंट्रो बट आई ट्राई द सेम वन सो या सो वेलकम बैक एवरीवन एंड नाउ इट्स माय टर्न टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस सम इश्यूज एंड प्रॉब्लम्स दैट स्टूडेंट्स यूजुअली फेस व्हेन दे कम टू ट्यू डेल्फ फॉर देयर स्टडीज or maybe netherlands right or maybe the netherlands yeah yeah any university in netherlands yes. so i am glad to be joined by our former friend and you might be following him because he has a very big fan base of around yeah, yeah. 4.3 <laughs> followers so he makes beautiful python videos just follow check his channel i'll leave it in the description below his name is pai lenin he's very popular he's like a python guru maybe yeah, yeah. by to 2020 <laughs> you will find yeah, a yeah. lot of his content hovering around everywhere yeah right? yeah i'll be everywhere don't worry <laughs> but uh, and generally my channel just a uh, quick uh, Uh, clarification my channel is about programming and uh, finding different kinds of programming jobs uh, in the netherlands various job application process so if you are in that phase where you are applying for different jobs you are trying to learn a different programming language um, try to make sure to check my channel follow us on instagram <laughs> and twitter <laughs> you'll find the Uh, yeah so you'll find like i think yours is at the red pie lenin yeah. is mostly everywhere his name is same yeah. i have different names yeah. so i'll put it in the description below here you can find like uh, our instagram and twitter feed and you can follow us there because there we share daily stories and different kind of quotes and other kind of things depending on our channel so you'll find much better interaction among with us apart from this few videos so it will be better if you follow us with my case uh, i think uh, there is a telegram group uh, it's about bite size codes where we uh, exchange snippets of code every day on various programming language you will find the link for the telegram group here in the description link and also we share uh, weekly coding challenges uh, on instagram so make sure to follow me on instagram where i am always i always stay updated and i update every piece of code Okay so this is what happens when you have uh, a growing channel where because you need to make this kind of intros so that people are who are new to this channel can know what is happening here and i think i sh- we should jump into the main topic now like yeah instead of promotion and everything yeah yeah, yeah. Okay so why don't you start with uh, uh, an issue a common issue you faced when you were okay. in your So so just to make it short uh, I did my masters in TU Delft in computer science and before coming to Netherlands uh, I mean after coming to Netherlands I had some issues so what we'll do here is like we'll just have a sh- informal discussion of some of the issues and sometimes we might uh, also give some tips based on our personal experience how you can tackle those issues but it might be something might be very open and we may not share the solution for that issue in every case so it is just for you to get our perspective so yeah. that it will help you because i know many people are going to come in this coming september and also in future yeah so personally the issue that i always discuss we were reflecting with some of my old friends also few days back is very very uh, i would say it's a very simple thing but i faced it because i was never out of india before i uh, came to netherlands i was never out of india and i had not seen that kind of a supermarket in the places that i lived in india so what happened was when i went to the supermarket initially i think in the first or the second day it was really difficult for me to like uh, uh, i mean like the entry and the exit most of the things are very semi automatic here we are used to shopping in a mess back in india where everything is just scattered around and you just pick what you want here everything is in an organized coordinated every every article every product has its own space you have to go to that particular space to get it uh, yeah so it's really difficult sometimes to actually find your way through it and especially if you are from india 
and you are used to eating certain kind of foods and you want them only and not those pasta and uh, you know yeah. orobilio rice Maybe or whatever different types of cheese like. uh, different types of cheese it's very difficult uh, for the first time uh, to go to a supermarket and get everything you want yeah that's true i mean even uh, if you have seen the albert hand video that i made here so there i had also shown you like how you measure the weights of different products when you are shopping in the supermarkets but that thing was also completely new when i went for the first time and when i was by the side of the cashier then she was asking like where is the tag like how can i scan this like where is the weight like of the bananas and tomato and other kind of things so these are like very very short simple things these things you learn by doing there is no solution or no advice anyone can offer but this is just our albert hein is still pretty modern you will still find people talking in english so if you ask them they will actually reply you back i once uh, the place where i lived i don't remember the place anymore i think pop the half right uh, I think it was Caesar, Caesar Frank Start. Start. Okay, the Caesar English Frank Start, and uh, the the closest supermarket was Lidl, and no one talks English there. <laughs> so if you ask them, they are going to look at you for two minutes and then say something in Dutch. It's probably they are swearing at you for some reason, but uh, yeah, yeah, no I, one speaks English. I and think mostly in Yumbo and Albert Hein, it's very yeah like because it is a very big market also, so they have a lot of maybe people, young yeah. people who are. Fluent in English, or yeah, something. yeah, that's true. So, but, but yeah, I, I guess that's one of the biggest issues people have. And I think if you are, I mean, most places you will find at least a Jumbo or Albert Hein near your house. Not uh, everywhere, but Albert Hein for sure. I'm not so sure about Jumbo. I think so because I was also living in a corner like in Valkenburg. Mm. Hey, sorry, not Valkenburg. <laughs> I forgot uh, the yeah, name. Yeah, uh, Van Hasselen. I yes. was staying in Van Hasselen, and. there also it was like there is a yumbo just by the opposite of my house like yeah. in front of the tram stop so it depends but yeah. that's like where delft is a very small city and other cities of netherlands is also very small so yeah yeah you'll find your way eventually that that is related to grocery i had another issue usually when uh, you land in uh, any university as a student and also because netherlands has this uh, amazing biking culture Uh, I think Amsterdam is the bike capital. I've said uh, yeah, this in the last yeah, time yeah, videos. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and you are you want to get a bike, you know, for transportation. You don't want to spend three euros every time on a tram to reach your university. Three plus three coming back again. So uh, biking is a very cheap option and it's also very healthy. And one of the issues I faced was that I was unable to find a reasonable bike store, or I was un- unable to find something. that i could get in my budget mm-hmm. especially because when i was a student i was i was looking out for every penny there you know if a bike cost 160 euros i was thinking okay how can i get a similar bike for 150 140 and also because bikes get easily stolen mm-hmm. here yeah. uh, every time you leave your bike on the street you go to a bar you go to some place Uh, there is a uh, big possibility that your bike can get stolen so for me spending that 150 200 euros for the first time on a bike was really important and it eventually it happened that i didn't buy buy a bike at all because i was so confused and i thought that 200 euros is a lot of money yeah, yeah, yeah. and i actually spent my entire masters walking to the university and back so that was like around 8 kilometers every day which is a terrible decision don't do that yeah uh i mean even i uh, i got the bike by accident because i was looking in facebook groups and other places mm-hmm. but every time whenever someone posts a uh, advertisement i answer it and there will be already like 100 people who yeah. answer every the, second and the, i got it by accident from a shop but luckily it was around 35 euros but i don't think everyone gets it like yeah, that it was yeah. just by luck i got that shop and that was the only piece available yeah. which is like a fifth hand old dutch bike with the paddle brakes by the way don't do this mistake sometimes what happens is when you're walking in the evening on the streets mm-hmm. some shady people approaches you with saying hey man i've got a bike for 20 euros want to buy it don't do that mm-hmm. never buy that bike for 20 euros because that's a stolen bike 
uh, it's already registered that's why he's just trying to you know earn some quick money that's why it's 20 euros uh, never do that uh, mistake ever. Yeah, yeah. I, I think even if the one that I bought, I heard this kind of story. So mm. I asked them for a proper receipt and something like that. Like they give you a receipt yeah. and you got some a receipt kind of for a 35 euro bike. Yeah, uh, very lucky. <laughs> then, but uh, anyway, I mean, it was from a proper shop. But okay. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's that's an issue I had. Another issue I had uh, is actually related to studies. The main reason why you are why you leave your family and come to the Netherlands, um, it's basically that uh, you will realize that in TU Delft uh, everything uh, is presentation based. Whenever a, teach, a professor is coming to a lecture, um, what they do is they prepare a presentation, they prepare a slide, slide. they explain uh, all the things, mm. but it's never like. Uh, it's uh, like in India, I had the uh, practice of, you know, my, my teacher solving problems in class, uh, explaining the theory through problems and everything. But here what happened is I saw most of the teachers, they were mostly explaining theories. They had a, a slide. They used to tell what all the formula is there, what are the variables, what is required. But the, we never got into problem solving. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, that was a very big issue because I had to come back home and prepare those uh, subjects, especially for the exams. When you're preparing for those uh, subjects, it's very difficult for me. It was difficult for me in a way that I was not able to apply that theory to practice and I had to practice a lot for it. Um, so as, if uh, I think it's, I mean, I obviously First, understand that it's a very different study culture no, yeah. or teaching culture, yeah. whatever you can say. Especially with subjects like operations research mm -hmm. or uh, I had a subject which was uh, related to transportation uh, and logistics that was also very much mathematical. Um, for yeah. those things, I uh, it was difficult for me to find something that actually, you know, like practice problem sets and all those kinds of things. So I spent a lot of time in the TU Delft library mm -hmm. with, my, with my friends trying to go through every problem, solving last year questions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But it was not that straightforward. So I would recommend, uh, here's a uh, piece of advice that I would recommend that every time you are in the lecture and every time you are given, uh, uh, every time the teacher hands you out uh, practice problem set or something don't try to go uh, home and solve it alone try to mm. find a group discuss discuss and solve it with them uh, w what i thought was that it's a waste of time you know sitting with a bunch of people ordering coffee mm. uh, talking bullshit and that is a waste of time i'll just go home and do it but honestly you will be spending five times more uh, at home trying to solve it alone so try to find a group of friends mm -hmm. Uh, do it together uh, th then it's way more easier yeah that's a good advice J just because you have a group doesn't it's not necessarily related to studies sometimes we're in uh, mm. you are in a group of six or seven you can easily plan uh, holidays like uh, uh, travel during the weekends mm. because you get get a group discount, discount. in ns and uh, at that time that is also that comes really useful yeah, because yeah. then you just make sudden decisions while working on something so you have a really good work life balance and uh, sometimes you go out for dinner it's not that expensive uh, uh, you can share uh, even even some group trips are also cheap right yes. like some museums and all i've seen yeah. like if you're 10 or 15 people yeah, yeah. they give you some group discount yes yes so there are a lot of benefits to being in a group. I think that was the biggest issue I had. And the issue was, I realized this was an issue after I graduated from TU Delft. So if you are a new student to TU Delft or any university, in fact, I think it applies to any university mm. in the world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make sure don't be alone. Stay yeah. in a group, uh, become friendly. It will also help you improve your soft skills, how to communicate how to improve your presentation, how to improve your writing style. So I think it's a very important thing to be social. Yeah, and, and also like, uh, I mean, personally I've seen like you also learn a lot of other yeah. things from there. Maybe the culture or maybe the way they think and yes. there are many type of things that you might have also experienced before, but it's just our like yeah. thing that happened and we just shared it with you. You ever had an issue with the toilet we had? Uh, you remember the weird kind of toilet shape we used to get? 
which one uh, so in uh, caesar frank strat actually oh, okay. every no no i mean no in my apartment van aslan was little bit bigger in room size but i think toilet wise the only issue was like the leg space near the commode yeah. the where you sit is like the i mean from the left side some places it's right side i, I think it's always left so that space was very limited yeah. i mean some people if yeah. you sit it will hit you have to sit like this bent yeah. and i think it is common for all these student houses i don't yeah. know the, the, okay that's not really an issue maybe you have to adjust i mean for me it was okay but yeah. some people complained yeah. like some people also complain that they have to switch from water to toilet papers directly because ah, there is yeah, no okay, outlet okay, okay, you know okay, okay. Yeah, yeah like no hand jet or something yeah. like what we also have yeah. in india exactly so that is a huge drastic uh, change and uh, yeah i mean you can't do anything i mean if you are indian then you'll understand yeah, this yeah. clearly what yeah. i'm saying my right? friend used to have a tub <laughs> bought a, uh, what we call as balti and a mug and he used to like fill a bucket it up. Uh, yeah a bucket and then he used to fill it up with water and go every time it's like a completely uh, we i used to share my indian friend me used to share our apartment with an english guy and he used to laugh every time But yeah, when that happens, you know. Uh, but uh, take care of yourself. Don't worry if someone is laughing at you. Thing. Yeah, I mean, just I think it's like whatever you feel comfortable. Sometimes it is better to be on un- to do what you feel okay instead of always care thinking about what others might say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we covered already the main issues yeah and another main issue i think we discussed about it a lot like the health and the medicines yeah. and other kind of things related to health yeah yeah so i think uh, one of the biggest issues here is that uh, doctors are not ready to write prescriptions for you uh, as willingly as doctors are in india it's a good thing it's also a bad thing bad thing is that when your health is really critical it's especially at that time it's not ready it's not really easy to get a prescription from a doctor and get the required medicines or antibiotics uh, that can help you recover and then make you get back to your studies you know so what i used to do is that uh, i already got all the necessary medicines for stomach ache for fever for cold from india Uh, it is allowed by the way i i i, mm. I do it every time i go back to india yeah, i i also bring like yeah. paracetamol i mean paracetamol is should not bring i also found out that uh, paracetamol is the only non harmful non reacting non antibiotic medicine which you will find also in the stores here and i think the price is also very cheap maybe yeah. little bit expensive than india but still i remember 40 paracetamol cost like 1 euro or 50 cents or something yeah. like that yeah so, so don't buy pa- paracetamol yeah. bring uh, medicines uh, specific medicines for fever uh, or maybe stomachache, cold or cold. vomiting or yeah those kind of things headache i don't know like. exactly so uh, maybe a balm like the amrutanjan yeah yeah but the medical shops here easily give you krudvat also the thing is uh, in the netherlands you need to have a general practitioner mm. uh, register you have to register with a general practitioner and uh, the medical insurance insurance when you are a student is around 40 euros i think mm-hmm. which covers the basic uh, things that that you might require but the problem is uh, every time you go to a general practitioner you 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 have to uh, make an appointment so if your mm-hmm. health is really critical and you want to make an appointment there is a very good chance that you won't get it as sudden as you want in mm-hmm. fact you might get it the next day or the other you know and they also had do they have holidays on saturday sunday or um, there will be someone replacing never really like looked that. into that but uh, 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 i think uh, in general you need some advance yeah. time so make sure when you are here you are alone uh, if you feel even a little bit uh, bad since you are actually paying 40 euros a month yeah, yeah. it's not bad or it's not shameful to get a full body check up every two months mm, because it is covered by the insurance yes exactly so uh, don't uh, play with your health and uh, uh, don't ignore it yeah i think that's an uh, important thing issue i had and that. i think should you mention anything about the crude but uh yeah like uh, all the medicines that you can get without any prescriptions 
you can find it in stores like Rudvat. Albertang actually has a really good uh, medicine stack. I mean, uh, once I just uh, injured my neck and I got the neck spray. Uh, Similar to move what like, they have in India. If you have problems sleeping, you can easily get melatonin. Uh, yeah, melatonin, uh, 5 milligram, 10 milligram. So that is covered. If you have the thing is in Netherlands, uh, vitamin D deficiency is very common among everyone. Mm -hmm. So you can get vitamin D tablets. You can get vitamin C tablets. I don't uh, use vitamin C or vitamin D tablets, although uh, it's not bad. Mm. Uh, I even I even I didn't use. I mean, it depends. Like some people, yeah. it's not the diet, but some people also have some other. Yeah, like I don't your know, body is more exposed yeah. to these things, and in this country, you will see that. Uh, lack of sunlight yeah anything. exactly so you can easily get these small things uh, in albertine krudvat there is any, also any, another any place. vitamin supplement or yeah. uh, you can easily get it yeah okay so i think this will be a nice cherry on the cake yeah i think like so to end it with the main thing which can wrap everything around like the uh, how would I frame it? That's a very big thing. Like, uh, how do you... Because I have seen personally during my time, there are some people even with full scholarship and also one person from computer science, they had some mental breakdown. I don't know if I can... I should say it as... It was very much related to the social and the medical and other kind of issues. Like sometimes... Yeah. Uh, so the point that I'm trying to make is that sometimes people already have some health problems like some of my friends had back problem or maybe stomach problem and to add to it here maybe they didn't pay attention or maybe they were not able to adapt that fast to the changing type of education here or the curriculum and other type of it's everything it's a yeah. change in food change in water weather. change in weather habits change in the curriculum different kind of teaching additional pressure and if you are not a scholarship student there is the pressure of finance yeah. so it's everything yeah so i would say like this happens to everyone but eventually everyone copes with it and yeah. moves on and if you get stuck among those few then it will be a problem because what happened with them was like after one or two quarters they were slowly taking less courses yeah. and with around third or fourth quarter everything gets uh, stacked up 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 like augmented and then later you realize like you are like at a very deficient pace and then you start thinking like oh okay maybe i'll go back yeah. but then it's like i don't know like it just waste one year of money which is really expensive as i see now the rates it has increased a lot it was also there but now also and so the only thing that i can say based on my experience it is very difficult to explain how you can cope with it but only thing i can say is whatever you have said before you just try to pay attention to all these little uh, minute details like the social life the groups and uh, the uh, other kind of social activities and all, like your health issues suppose you have problem with your health like the stomach problem then i would say first and foremost priority you should give is like to eat well or maybe cook something even though it takes much of your time because if you pay attention to those things like your body mind and soul as people say then all these things will follow up like you will feel that mood that motivation that self-confidence and you can easily uh, approach it with a different mindset another thing that i would say which helped me a lot was like uh, if you start slow when you have this kind of changing that was my take on it so if you start these things slow like just try to observe everything happening around you and maybe try to make small changes small baby steps to to approach all this individual category of things then you will feel that after a certain period of time which you may not even notice you start increasing your pace and it automatically you get used to that running system and everything else so that is what i felt maybe that might be useful if you see things in that way and yeah maybe it's you not can a, add something it's not right? a it's not a rabbit race you know yeah, you're yeah, not yeah. running a race at all it's about it's about a marathon that you are running and you have to make sure you make 
you reach the end you know you reach the finish line of it and uh, i was a uh, underperforming student in my bachelor's i have, uh, my friends will uh, completely agree with me there and everything uh, but coming to netherlands really changed my life both in terms of my knowledge both in terms of my experience my maturity mm. and everything and the the thing is you have to go at it like the one thing i realized is that you cannot leave something you have to keep doing it doing it and after some after some time you realize that you will you are getting good at it even if you are not the best at it you are getting good at it and you have to keep trying every time so uh, take it easy from the start uh, take you uh, if you do 15 credits uh, per uh, quarter it's enough don't take i know some people who take like 20 25 electives and then fail completely <laughs> one of my friends from uttar pradesh i'm not going to name him he took 30 credits in the second quarter saying oh that okay God. i'm going to you know kick ass no, but no, then no. Uh, i mean it yeah. depends like I, that then is really high like he i mean even finish any 30 quarters then the next quarter he was completely behind he mm-hmm. didn't know what to choose because he had to also apply for back papers and then after one year he decided to change his masters uh, degree oh like God. he moved to a different uh, field all together and then you have one more year and you yeah. spend lot of money like two more years and of course money was not a problem for him ah, but uh, okay. but still you know i mean i think most people will have money as a problem the guy who the person who earned it will have a, pro- a problem i guess you know but yeah but that's the whole thing don't uh, try to you know uh, finish everything at once takes baby steps take those steps often that's yeah, yeah, the main yeah. thing yeah i mean uh, just a small thing like that ects thing that i mentioned remind reminded me of my situation like i completed all I, i completed 75 ects in the first year but in the first two quarters even i took very few ects like I think in the first I took 15 and in the next I just increased one more 20 and then in the third I increased one more 25 but I never went to 30 I just I mean there are also some courses for two quarters so I don't remember exactly but it was like you just see how far you can reach and then you just have a small increase it's not like you have 15 and you suddenly think okay then let me take the twice of that yeah. so don't like have have some ambition it's good but don't be like too much over ambitious and yeah. just stray away somewhere else like no be ambitious for sure take big steps if you want but if you are not able to do it be honest with yourself and you know take a step back yeah. don't overburden yourself saying just because you have taken it you have to do it it's uh, it's not like that so yeah. yeah i mean just have that self reflection yeah. and self assessment of yourself every yeah yeah so i guess it's a good time uh, to come to netherlands come to the netherlands yeah so if you have any questions make sure to put them down in the comment section below and if you want to learn programming if you want to learn about jobs uh, here in the netherlands make sure to check out my channel a uh, pilot in and don't forget to subscribe his channel yes yes uh, um, and uh, you will find find really good content especially based on uh, the situation here in the netherlands and uh, yeah any questions just shoot and if you want to help out your friends then don't forget to share this video so yeah. that it reaches to everyone who might be finding something useful yeah. and smash the thumbs up button if you like the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel and see you in future videos yes. till then peace from Bye. amsterdam yeah